Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to apply constraints to the components of our assembly. Constraints are what let us position components in their correct position against other components. In other words, constraints remove degrees of freedom. Currently, as you remember, our base is grounded, and that means it's stationary or has zero degrees of freedom. However, the rest of the components can be freely moved. There's a way that we can monitor the degrees of freedom right in the graphic area. Let's right click on the base and select Eye Properties. Go to the Occurrence tab and let's check Degrees of Freedom. Apply and close. Visually, nothing has changed for this component and this confirms that the base has zero degrees of freedom. Let's bring up the degrees of freedom for part two. Right click, select Eye Properties, Occurrence tab, check Degrees of Freedom. Apply and close. Now part two displays a triad indicating six degrees of freedom. It can freely move along all three axes and that's what the three arrows there mean. Those circular segments indicate that it can be rotated along all three axes as well. Let's select the constrain tool from the position panel. We can choose from four constraint types, mate, angle, tangent, and insert. The mate type is currently active. Selection 1 is blue, and that's enabled. I'll make my selection now, this face here. Now Selection 2 is active. Let's select a second face. We'll select this face here. We've got the option to apply a mate or a flush solution. The mate solution is pre-selected. Let's click flush. Notice the face we selected first displays a red mesh, the second face a green mesh. The corresponding colors are seen in underline on selections 1 and 2 here. If you made a mistake while making your selections, just activate the selection option and reselect the correct face. For this example, I'm going to use the mate solution type, so let's click on mate. And then we'll click apply. The tool remains open. To close the tool, let's click cancel. Notice that three degrees of freedom were removed. Our part can move along the Y and Z axes, as well as rotate along the X axis. Our new constraints are also indicated in the tree. Both Part 2, as well as Base 1, both contain mate nodes now. When I mouse over the constraint in the tree, it becomes highlighted in the graphic area. Let's go ahead and apply another constraint. Click on the Constraint tool. Once again, the mate type is pre-selected. I'm going to select this face for selection one, and now for selection two, this face. For the solution, we'll use the flush option and click apply. Click cancel to close the tool. Now our part has one degree of freedom. As you can see, it can only move along the Z axis now. Let's apply one more constraint. Activate the constraint tool. Mate type, we'll select this face and this face. Once again, for a solution, we can use the mate or flush options. Now in this case, we can only use the flush option for a mate that's solvable, but currently mate is pre-selected. Let's just apply it and see what happens. Click apply. We get a warning from inventor. The assembly can't be solved. We're able to apply one of four actions. We can edit the constraint. Cancel the operation, accept the constraint with the instability that this entails, or diagnose the constraint. Let's edit the constraint. Now we'll select the flush solution option. Let's offset this constraint by a quarter inch, 0 0.25, and let's click apply and cancel to close the tool. Now part two is fully constrained and has zero degrees of freedom. Our browser tree now displays three mate nodes for part two and base one. You'll remember that for flush two, we entered an offset value and that's displayed here a quarter of an inch. Double click on the flush two node. The edit dimension dialog window appears. Let's change the offset value. Let's add a minus symbol and okay. If we right click on the mate, we can select edit. This launches the edit constraint window. Let's cancel out for now. We're also able to right-click on the mate and select Modify. Again, this launches the Edit Dimension dialog window where we can change the offset distance. Let's make it zero and click Accept. Now let's constrain the next part. 
Let's display its degrees of freedom as we did for the base and for part two. Right-click and select I Properties, Occurrence tab. Check Degrees of Freedom, Apply and OK. Now activate the Constraint tool. Type, we'll use Mate. Let's make our selections now, this edge and this edge. Let's click Apply and cancel out of the tool. As you can see, I've removed four degrees of freedom. My part basically behaves like a hinge now. Let's activate the Constrain command again. We'll select this edge and this edge, and let's click Apply. Now I've removed five degrees of freedom. The part can only move along the z-axis now. To remove this degree of freedom, let's apply one more mate. Solution type, mate. Another mate constraint. Let's make our selections. For the solution type, let's use mate. Let's click Apply and leave the tool active. Next, I'm going to apply mates between part three and the base. Let's select this cylindrical face and this cylindrical face here. Apply and cancel. Now let's right click on this part and select I properties, occurrence tab, check degrees of freedom, apply and close. As you see, part three still has two degrees of freedom. It can both move and rotate along the Y axis. Let's apply a couple more constraints now. We'll select this face and this face. Solution will be flush. Let's apply. Lastly, we need to constrain the rotation of this part. Solution will be flush. Apply. Let's apply a constraint between this cylindrical part and this cylindrical face here. Apply. One more constraint. This face and this face. Solution type is flush. Apply. Now this part is positioned correctly, but it still can't rotate. Let's apply a few more constraints. Activate the constraint command. Select this face and this face. Oops, I selected the wrong face here. Let's change the selection. There we go. Click apply. And I'll select this face and this one. Apply again. For the last cylinder, let's use the Insert Mates option. Select this edge and this one here. Solution type will be Aligned. Let's apply and cancel out of the tool. This last component that I positioned, even if it rotates, it's still adequately constrained. To fully constrain it, I can use, for example, an angular constraint. Let's try it out. Here's the angle constraint option. Let's select this edge and this one, for example. The angle value will leave it at zero, apply, and cancel out of the tool. Now this component has zero degrees of freedom. If I try to move it, I see a symbol next to the mouse indicating that it is fully constrained. However, in this instance, fully constraining this screw is not necessary, so let's just delete that constraint, right click and delete. And this concludes our first lesson on applying constraints in your assembly.